Okay, while I tell you about a series of events which lead to a court case on March the 29th, 2019, I will show you how many years this person is facing if found guilty in comparison to other penalties for crimes in South Australia, which is where this man lives. His name is Richard Boyle and he worked for the ATO, the Australian Tax Office. Mr Boyle worked there for over a decade, but the 8th of June 2017 may have been a sign that that was going to come to an end. You see, that was the day Mr Boyle and his co-workers had a meeting where they were instructed to start handing out standard garnishy orders, which seemed apparent to Richard and his co-workers that this was indeed a cash grab. Now, what do you mean, garnishy? Well, the dictionary has it as a third party who is instructed by a way of legal notice to secure money to settle a debt or claim. So it's pretty much the tax office going to a third party, which could be your bank, your employer, and just taking your money for said debt straight from them, like 30% from your bank account over periods of time, or they could even go for the whole sum. This being paired with staffers being set revenue goals is a obvious recipe for disaster. But what's most devastating is how it's reported that the main target was small businesses mainly because they wouldn't have the funds to then fight them in court. Most would just roll over and pay it because they didn't want to try and take on the Australian Tax Office, which is a giant and very powerful government agency with endless legal resources. So the legal battle could go on forever and cost far more than the original debt. We're reading of people spending seven years and $700,000 with the end result of a $1,000 compensation. But either way, the debt repayments or the legal fees have seen people financially ruined, bankrupt, unable to pay for their children's school needs and you just got to be concerned when you read articles of people's stories and at the end of it they have the phone numbers for the suicide hotlines. I'll just leave it at that. And then it comes to no surprise and is also an indicator that this isn't a new thing of targeting small business owners because back in 2016 Chris Jordan, the commissioner for the ATO, uh, said there should be less scrutiny of the agency which then caused small businesses to go, excuse me what? I don't think so. Quite the opposite buddy. Quite the opposite. Now, back to Richard Boyle's story. That September, he was suspended without pay for which has vaguely been reported as a breach of public service code of conduct or not following instructions, which I personally am going to assume that he was pretty much sacked for not ruthlessly trying to financially screw people of Adelaide over. In February, he was offered a settlement, but he turned it down because the settlement came with conditions of not speaking out about this. So he turned down the money and went to Fairfax Media and four corners to blow the whistle on the misconduct of the Australian Tax Office. It then comes to April 2018, a few days before Four Corners is going to broadcast their segment and Richard Boyle's home is raided by the Australian Federal Police and ATO officers. They went through everything, searching for documents and such, and he was handed a summons with the signature of an informant who was none other than Chris Jordan, the ATO commissioner. The impression given off by the officers was that Mr Boyle was being charged with a crime or something to do with speaking to the media and having confidential information and tax things, you know. Now he went to a hearing on the 1st of March 2019 and it was adjourned because they only gave him the sheet of the formal charges then. Now before I tell you about those charges and the penalty he's facing, I want to point out a few things I found which I find very interesting and that's why I've been trying to emphasize dates and I put a lot of work into working out this timeline and trying to make it accurate because I looked at federal law and South Australian law and this is what I found. Okay, an amendment to the Public Interest Disclosure Act of 2013 took them from the 20th of December 2018 to, this, to 11th of January 2019. Now it's pretty much as usual just another word salad so I'll spare you and move on to South Australian laws. Now, remember, this is where he lives. The Public Interest Disclosure Bill, I believe it's still being processed into an act. I'm not sure it has passed both the houses, but I don't think it's official yet. Now that went through the House of Representatives on the 16th of May, and then ended up in the Senate on the 6th of November, 2018. May, a month after April. I'm just saying. Now, what do you reckon section 302B of the Local Governance Act of 1999 was? Oh, would you look at that? And how about Section 7 of the Public Sector Act 2009? Oh, wow. Can't really be that surprising when this public interest disclosure is meant to replace Whistleblowers Protection Act of 1993. That's a bit sus. If he's found guilty, I will lose my shit. Especially how the ex-deputy commissioner for the ATO found not guilty of financial fraud for using his position to influence people and to get information for his son to further his business. Now he actually did something, not too sure exactly what Richard Boyle did, other than try to stand up for the people and not ruin businesses. 
you know, he's being punished for having compassion and common decency in his job as a debt collector. Okay, Richard received 66 charges, which amount to, as you can see, 161 years in prison. That's six life sentences. That's insane. It seems like this series of events has put Richard in quite a shit situation, completely stripped the term whistleblower from South Australian law, and highlighted agencies' power and willingness to just annihilate people. You see, Australia has some sort of whistleblower protection for the private sector, not so much the public sector. As you can tell by them trying to make an example out of this man, the fact that he turned down the settlement, in my eyes, gives him a lot of credibility. And then when he got raided, just pretty much said, yep, yeah, he's right then, why would they bother if he wasn't correct. I won't even get started on the amendments to the laws. And even still, regardless of all that, no way could any sort of crime involving information and phone calls should be more than actually killing a person. 161 years. Like, if that doesn't say to anybody else who thinks about calling out wrongdoings of a government agency to think twice, I don't know, what would? Richard Boyle should not be prosecuted for anything. There's no crime that he committed. If anything, Chris Jordan, the commissioner, should be sacked. And Richard Boyle should take his job. I reckon he'd be a much better commissioner of the ATO. The people should get around this, should back him, support him, because this will be the ultimate miscarriage of justice right here. I'll leave it at that. Oh, and as for the laws you saw me write down, I think South Australia should do something about that, because they're all as of May 2018, apparently, so it's not like they're even really old. And so that said, Richard Boyle for ATO commissioner. Not 161 years in prison. And thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, and thank you very much.